to know Mark now for a number of years. God brought Mark's family, Jason and Jennifer Sly, and their two beautiful girls to Grace Life some years ago. They've since moved off to Fairhope, and we got to keep Mark around. And then a couple of weeks ago, on our day of prayer, Mark came up after the service to see me. And he was emotional. He said, I'm never emotional, but he said, I, I need to talk to you today. And that was the day, as he sat in that prayer service, that uh, the Lord spoke to Mark's heart and basically said, you know about me, but you don't know me. And that, and that was the day that Mark trusted Jesus to be his Savior and his God. And we, man, it made my day. I tell lots of people. Made your day. Made your eternity, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So Mark, upon your profession of faith in Jesus as your Savior and your Lord, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in his death. Raise the wall for new life. Man, oh man, I love that we get to start almost every Sunday watching somebody follow the Lord in baptism that never, ever gets old. And I am thankful that you're here. You being here never gets old either. And I want to uh, just say if you're kind of new to Grace Life, we're especially glad to have you worshiping the Lord with us today. Just relax and make yourself at home. Uh, and we pray you'll experience the Lord's presence with us today. If you'd like to find out more about Grace Life, there's a tearaway tab on your worship guide. I'm pretty sure somebody handed you one of those as you came in. Uh, if you would like to uh, ask a question or if there's a way we could pray for you or help you in any way, feel free to give us uh, a way that we could contact you on that green tab. And on the back side of that green tab is an opportunity for you to do a couple things maybe you feel the Lord's leading you to do. One is to attend our next Membership Matters class. We just started one. Uh, they're starting right now over in the fireside room. So if you want to go to that, uh, feel free to ditch this group in just a minute and go to the fireside room. We take care of child care and lunch when we do membership class. But the next one coming up is on May the 15th. That's on the back side of the green tab. You could check that box and let us know. And going to that class doesn't obligate you to join the church in no way. It just helps you learn more about uh, what God's doing here, and that could be helpful to you as you discern where God wants you to be. Also, maybe you have never followed the Lord in Believer's Baptism, and you would like to do that. There's a box for that as well. You could check that. Let us know that you're interested in doing that. We'll be baptizing, I think, about eight people today. Uh, as soon as this service is over, we'll be moving toward the Student Center. Uh, so you guys do me a favor. Don't let me forget, as this service is wrapping up, to dismiss myself and all those people getting baptized in their families so we can get on out to the Student Center. Um, let's see, what else were we going to talk about? VBS. Yeah, VBS is good. We're for that. The, on the white side, check this out. On the white side of the green tab, there's a green box. Did you follow that mental gymnastics move there? On the white side of the green tab, there's a little green box that's about Vacation Bible School. So if you'd like to serve in Vacation Bible School, you can let us know. Uh, by checking that box there, put your name on the back side, and we'll be getting in touch with you. That's just around the corner. Um, oh, baptism. I, 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 let me go back to baptism. I knew there was something else. Some of you have been asking, when are we going to do another baptism at Shadow Lake? Uh, some of you are waiting for the outdoor <laughs> baptismal services. So the next outdoor uh, baptisms is going to take place at Shadow Lake on May the 22nd. That's a Sunday. We'll do it in the evening at 630 because watching the sun go down, it's just an awesome time to get baptized out there. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about that. Uh, the building, just a quick update. There's really nothing to say. It's just kind of going really, really slow. We are still hoping that we're finished with that by the time Vacation Bible School starts. But if we're not, that's okay. We're going to have Vacation Bible School. We'll make it work. Um, but we're still, there's like tomorrow, another structural engineer's coming out. Still having insurance people come out. It's just really, really slow. So thank you guys for your flexibility and all that you guys are doing to help make it work week in and week out. We're very, very thankful for that. Well, let's, um, oh, is Stephanie still here? Stephanie Gates, are you still here? Yes. yes. Stephanie and Sarah, would you ladies come and join me here on the platform? And I'm assuming Miss Katz in Sunday school. I think Rick's teaching this hour too. Um, Sarah Smith, the lovely lady in the pink here, is one of our leaders for our Operation Christmas Child Ministry. And she is being followed by Miss Stephanie Gates, who um, serves the Lord in that ministry. And Stephanie, I want to hand you a microphone, and you can share with us why you're here today. 
come here to thank you, this wonderful congregation for 10, 10 plus years of uh, serving as a relay center with Operation Christmas Child. We were counting up this morning, we think it's more like 15 or 16, so next year you may get the 15 year award <laughs> in only one year. Um, but we, we have loved serving with this church. Your, your shoebox numbers continue to grow and uh, you just continue to serve people and love people as they come and drop off their shoe boxes. And really quick, um, it's not just a Christmas gift for these kids, it's a chance for them to hear about Jesus Christ and to come to know him as their savior. And in 2014, I don't have the 2015 numbers yet, um, of the, there's a 12 week Bible study that the kids can participate in after they get their shoe box. In 2014, just over two million kids signed up to take that class and of those, almost one million kids accepted Christ as their savior. So I just wanna thank you and look forward to many more years of partnering with Kat and, and Sarah and Rick and Marilyn and Dave Montgomery have been a big help to it too. Amen, amen. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Miss Sarah. And praise the Lord for Operation Christmas Child. Great ministry. And when you hear those statistics about how many children have come to know Jesus through that ministry, there's no doubt about it. If you've been putting shoeboxes together over the last number of years, there's a, there's a strong possibility that the box that you put together ended up in the hands of a little boy or a little girl who gave their lives to Jesus. That ought to excite you and fire you up to go ahead and start working on shoeboxes. That'll be, we'll start like uh, October, I think, is when we start. Is that, they just left. <laughs> just left. Never mind. We're not going to support that ministry anymore. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They, they were in here. They sat through the whole first hour. Um, so, yeah, we're fired up about that. Great, great ministry. We're going to have a great, great day. We already are today. So I want to invite you to stand with me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together today. Lord, we are so grateful that you are at work all over the world. God, even as we sit here in our little piece of the world, we don't have any idea what you have already accomplished in so many places today, in so many hearts, in so many lives. Lord, we're grateful that we're your family. We get to be a part of your kingdom, your church. And Lord, we just want today for you to be pleased with our gathering. Lord, we want everything that we do and the way that we do it to bring honor and glory to you. We want your son, Jesus, his, his name and his name alone to be lifted to the highest place today and God we just declare today as we start a new week on this first day of a new week that there is none like you you're our God and God alone and there is no other Lord we turn our hearts our lives everything we are the good the bad and the ugly of us we turn it all toward you now as we just come before you with praise and worship we just ask the Holy Spirit that you'd rain down on us today. Change us. Make us more like Jesus. Fill us with hope, peace, and purpose today for your glory and our joy. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. and all of God's people said, Amen. hey, it's okay to have fun on Sundays, right? All right? Is that okay? I mean, if you're looking like for boring and dull and rah, 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 we ain't the place you want to be, all right? We believe the grave's still empty. And we're going to celebrate that until Jesus comes. Amen? Amen. Let's celebrate. Water you turn into wine. You open the eyes of the line. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, not like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Again, into the darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise. Into the darkness you shine, and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, not like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God. 
whispering to my wife and my microphone's on. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. She was asking me if our little boy Elijah's going to sign the covenant book today. He's getting baptized today. So that's a big deal. Yeah. I want to invite, um, I think it's me and Mike and Saint. Saint, if you'll come join us. We want to present to you today um, some new members for your affirmation into membership at Grace Life. And uh, this is, today is what we call our covenant service. If you've never been here and we've had a covenant service, you're going to see what we do on covenant days. It's uh, the favorite day that, for me, that we get to have at Grace Life together. So um, let us introduce these people to you this morning. First of all, uh, I had the privilege of meeting with Alafi and Olivia Bashir. And Alafi actually um, is following the Lord in baptism. We've been trying to Baptize Alafi for a while, but things keep coming up. Uh, Alafi, I told the first hour, he gets the prize for traveling the furthest to church. He is from Sudan, all right? So if you drove further than Sudan today, let me know, and we'll give you the prize. Uh, but uh, Alafi and Olivia, sweet couple that love the Lord, and if you rejoice with me and then becoming a part of our church family, would you say amen? Amen. Also, I had the privilege of meeting with Bobby and Kathy Jackson, and I also highly recommend Bobby and Kathy to you in the membership at Grace Life. If you rejoice with us in that, say amen. amen. There's a Lafayette, yeah. We're going to get baptized today, right? Yes. All right. 
My brother Bonner Hess is back there in the back. Bonner, I highly recommend him and the membership at Grace Life. If you rejoice with us in that, say amen. amen. And this little girl who likes to sit next to Bonner for some reason, her name is Chrissy Marino. Chrissy's family, we affirmed them last time, but she didn't get to go to that class with them. So I get the privilege today of highly recommending Chrissy Marino to membership at Grace Life. If you rejoice with us in that, would you say amen? Amen. I also had the privilege of meeting with Miss Lynn Smith. Miss Lynn also has finished that process, and I recommend her highly to you. Remembership at Grace Life, if you rejoice with us in that, would you say amen? amen. And I also, on, on Friday, I actually finished up. I met with Coulter and Hayden Milliken and the most perfect two-and-a-half-year-old little girl you have ever been around in your life. Don't listen to what her parents say. She came through that membership interview like nobody's business, man. So I highly recommend Coulter and Hayden Milliken to membership at Grace Life. If you rejoice with us in that, would you say amen? Amen. 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 Go ahead. Rick's not here, so yeah, you're going to pinch hit for Rick. That'd be great. Uh, of course, you got to see Mark, uh, I guess it's Mark's last baptism earlier. Uh, and so I want to, on behalf of Rick, uh, highly recommend him for membership here at at Grace Life, if you join me in that, would you say amen? Amen. And Margaret Glasgow, I don't know if Margaret She was in the first service. In the first service. Uh, sweet, sweet lady. Uh, if you have a little time, enter into conversation with her, and she will bless you like nobody's business, I'm telling you. Great just to get to know her and hear her testimony. And uh, Rick met with her, and uh, so on, on Rick's behalf, I Highly recommend Margaret for membership here at Grace Life. If you join me in that, would you say amen? Amen. And Jimmy Cruz, also Rick met with Jimmy and uh, heard his testimony and highly recommends him for membership here at Grace Life. If you join me in that, would you say amen? Amen. All right. I heard a big amen from somebody over here. I like that. That's a child. Get this fellow right there. Way to go. Uh, and then for... Um, for Johnny, he met with Tommy and uh, Betty Sagan. Tom and Betty Sagan. I don't know if they're they're in the first time. service. Uh, I miss all these folks when I'm out there. We, we all do, I guess. We could go out to Shadow Lake and have one big service. That's it. Dog. That's I'm it. Just saying. It could happen. It could happen. Uh, so Tom and Betty Sagan, uh, Johnny met with them and highly recommends them for membership here at Grace Life. If you join me, say amen. Amen. And then Chris and Janelle George and their Two kids, Autumn and Silas. Johnny met with them, and they've uh, been act They've just jumped in with all fours and fives, and I guess there's eight of them, uh, eight hands uh, together. And so Johnny recommends them highly for membership, and if you join me in that, would you say amen? Amen. And then I had the privilege of meeting with Miss Katie Brown. I don't know if Katie's in here. She was in the first service. Okay. I saw Gianni up, upstairs, her son. Uh, Delightful young lady, and just is super to hear her testimony of how God's been at work in her her life and her family, and uh, uh, it's exciting there. And so I highly recommend Katie for membership here at Grace Life. And if you join me in that, would you say Amen? Amen. I'm gonna fill in for Will because he's uh, helping teach in the Membership Matters class right now. Um, he met with Melissa Finley and her kids Levi and Locks, and so if they'll be coming for membership, if you rejoice. With them coming along, say amen. amen. And uh, also, he met with Troy McAdory, and I uh, highly recommend Troy. So if you rejoice with her becoming a member, say amen. 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 And uh, he also met with Roger and Amanda Bowes, uh, and their kids, Matthew Cox and Brianna Bodifer. And uh, so if you rejoice in them becoming members, say amen. 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 Right. amen. That's it. I think that's 27 people that became part of the Grace Life family today. And, and there's another class meeting right now as we speak. So the Lord continues to add to our family, and we are blessed and thankful for each one and what they've already come to mean to us as a church family. So it'll be their first time to get to do this, and we get to uh, do this right alongside them today. Let's read our church covenant together. So I want to invite you to stand. And I want us to read our church covenant today with joy and gladness, with a, with a heart of worship. We get to do this. We are the people of God. He's called us out of darkness and into light. And doing life is not easy, is it? But because of Jesus, we get to do life together as brothers and sisters in the Lord. And that's really what all this is about. So let's read together. Having, as we trust, been brought by divine grace to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and to give up ourselves to him 
and having been baptized upon our profession of faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now, relying on his gracious aid, solemnly and joyfully renew our covenant with each other. We will work and pray for the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We will walk together in brotherly love as becomes the members of a Christian church. Exercise an affectionate care and watchfulness over each other and faithfully admonish in meekness and encourage one another as may require. We will not forsake the assembling of ourselves together nor neglect to pray for ourselves and others. We will strive to raise those under our care in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and by a pure and loving example to seek the salvation of our family and friends. We will rejoice at each other's happiness and endeavor with tenderness and sympathy to bear each other's burdens and sorrows. We will seek by divine aid to live carefully in the world, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, and remembering that as we have been voluntarily buried by baptism and raised again from the symbolic grave, so there is on us a special obligation now to live a new and holy life. We will work together for the continuance of a faithful evangelical ministry in this church as we sustain its worship, ordinances, disciplines, and doctrines. We will contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We will humbly and earnestly seek to live to the glory of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We will, when we move from this place as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. I want you to remain standing and I want to invite any of our new members that have not had the opportunity to sign our covenant book. They can come at this time and do that as you all surround them with worship and praise today. We're going to sing this song. This song is called Because We Believe. And you just repeat after me and sing what I sing. Love. 
A few weeks ago, the Lord directed us to begin uh, looking toward our future as a church family, to pray through how God would have us uh, to give generously and cheerfully toward whatever that future may look like. We, we talked some about the Barnabas survey. We did that for a couple of weeks, and I'm not going to do that today. If you don't know what that is, you're going to have to go back and look in the archives or call me up. We'll talk about it or whatever, but I don't want this day to be about that. But today is the day that we had asked you to pray about, to be prepared, to turn in your Barnabas survey cards. And so I hope that you came ready to do that. And, and some of you also probably came today ready to go ahead and begin giving gifts uh, to that cause. Uh, we call that the jar. You'll notice inside your worship guide this morning, there's a little envelope there called the jar. So any gifts that you'll be giving... Uh, this year that want to go toward the future at Shadow Lake, you'll put that in that envelope called the jar. So what we're going to do right now is this is not our regular offering time, okay? We're going to use these buckets. This is for the Barnabas survey and for those special gifts that the Lord has laid it on your heart to give uh, toward that effort today. So I'm going to invite our ushers to come, and let's just all stand. And ushers, I, I, I hear you go, Norm. I took one out of, out of there. There you go. Before y'all got start, let's just hold up ushers, let's just pray. This is a special moment, I think, for us as a family, a special moment for Grace Life. So let's just, let's just talk to the Lord together about this today. Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, for who you are. And God, we are grateful that we get to see you do great and mighty things day in and day out here. We, we're blessed, Lord, and I pray we don't take that for granted. Lord, to see lives being changed every single week. People added to your kingdom and added into our fellowship. Uh, Lord, we just, we just keep water going in the baptistry. God, we're grateful that we need it. God, you're good and faithful, and you have just over and over again shown yourself to be so strong and good among us. And Lord, so we face some questions that we don't really have answers to. But Lord, we just believe that you have led us to this time and this place in our history where 
Those answers will be found within each and every one of us and how we respond to you, how we respond to your grace and your gospel. Lord, we're asking one more time that today we would simply give the right gift, the one you've told us to give, and we'd give it with the right spirit, cheerfully and generously, and we'd give it for the right reason, to see you honored and glorified. And Lord, I pray that there would, and we've asked you this many times over these weeks, and I'm going to ask you again, God, I pray there would not be a drop of guilt that causes one penny to be given. But God, your glorious grace and your gospel, God, may that be what drives us to give whatever it is that you lay on our hearts so that we can be the kind of givers that you love, cheerful, glad, generous givers. So be honored, be pleased, God, today with this. And God, may it be all for your kingdom and your glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Just remain standing. Let's worship the Lord together as we do this together today.
what I'm fired up about with what we just did is not like the gifts they're going to be given. What I'm really fired up about is in the last month, I have watched God change so many hearts at Grace Life as we've walked through this journey. So many things that are just unexplainable. God's timing, His sovereignty, and so many of those things, and conversations that I've had. Um, I, mean, I, I, I could tell you a story from this morning that's so fresh. Nobody interrupts me on Sunday morning before I preach. I got a routine, man. I'm, I'm not a creature of habit at any time in my life except on Sunday morning. And I got flat interrupted. Somebody that's not even a member just came and busted up and just, just began to pour out and just craziness, man. God's so good. So uh, I'm not so excited about what went in those buckets this morning. I'm really excited about what God's been doing in your hearts. And that, that, that's so much more important, so much more important. Praise the Lord. Hey, kids, come on up here, and our ushers can come to receive our normal offering at this time. You forgot, didn't you? There you go. Whoop. You ran so fast to go in the front row, and you forgot your envelope, dude. <laughs> Had to go back and get it. Well, good morning. You guys doing well? Good. Hey, you know what's about to happen? School's about to be out, isn't it? Yay! We've got like seven weeks left. <laughs> Six, seven, I don't know, eight, four weeks left. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. So you know what happens when school gets out? The biggest, the biggest event of the year. Bass, Bible. Nobody gets a ball today. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Who has not, are you kidding me? You have, you have not gotten a ball. Are you serious? Why are you looking at me like I'm trying to give you a straight face? I'm really trying hard. Have you not really gotten a ball? Are you sure? Okay. Nice. You know, a little girl got the ball in the first service, and guess what color she picked? Blue. And so did you. How about that? I don't know what's significant about that. but Hey, I got a great... Bible story I want to share with you guys this morning. This is one of my favorites. And I bet you've heard it before. We need to hear this a lot. We need to hear it a lot. Because sometimes, do you, do you ever, do you ever, are you ever mean to people? Are you ever mean to like your brother or sister, right? All right, so yeah, but that don't make being right, that don't make it right being mean to somebody else because they were mean to you, right? And that's right, so... So, so the, I love this story because we need to hear this every day. Because big folks, sometimes they can get mean too. They don't act real loving or kind or nice to other people. So we never outgrow our need for Jesus to help us be more like this person called the, very good, the Good Samaritan. One day, a lawyer put Jesus to the test. He said, I know the law says to love God with all my heart. And to love my neighbor as myself. But who is my neighbor? Jesus told him this parable. A parable is a story. He said a man was on his way to the city of Jericho. And some robbers beat him. And they stole everything that he had. And the man was hurt. He needed help. It's Kind of sad, isn't it? Kind of scary. And there's still mean people in our world today. But there's also good people. And I want you guys to be those good people. Along came a priest. Well, this sounds good. The priest saw the man, but he did not stop. Along came a helper in the temple. He saw the man, but he did not stop. And then along came a Samaritan man. When he saw the hurt man, he stopped. The Samaritan man cleaned up the man's wounds. He lifted the man onto his own donkey, and he took him down the road to an inn. They stayed at the inn, and the Samaritan man took care of the hurt man all night long, said Jesus. In the morning, the Samaritan man gave the innkeeper two silver coins and said, Take good care of him until I return. After Jesus finished the story, he asked, Which one of the three men was the neighbor? The lawyer answered, The one who took care of the hurt man. And Jesus said, Go and do as he did. You know, that good Samaritan didn't even know that man. But he knew that man was hurt. He knew that man needed help. And he helped somebody that he didn't even know. And I love that you guys, y'all do a lot of that same sort of stuff. And we as a church, we want to do that same thing too. Because that pleases God when we love other people. And when we help other people. 
So I want to invite Mr. Carlos to come, and he's going to pray for us today. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something awesome. Something big happened to Mr. Carlos this morning. Before he even came to church. Did you have No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Before he came to church this morning, his two grandchildren came to his house for the very first time ever. Can you believe they had never been to his house before and they came early this morning? Before? Do you know why they had never been to his house before? They weren't alive. Because they were ba they're babies. They just got out of the hospital. They've been in intensive care for a couple of weeks. And today, little Evelyn and Avery, twin boy and girl, got to come to Papa Los's house before church started. Everybody say, hey, Papa Los. Papa Los. I hope when I'm a granddaddy one day I can have a cool name like that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the Puerto Rican pizza man, Papa Los. <laughs> All right, let's calm down, kids. Mr. Carlos is going to pray for us. Let us pray. Oh, dear Lord, we are joyful and, and grateful for your son who died for us, Lord. And uh, Lord, help us to be a good steward of your, what you provide us, Lord. And Lord, uh, thank you for the many blessings. And we pray for these children. and. Lord, that uh, uh, you will help the parents to raise a godly seed, Lord. Um, we are thankful for our nation, Lord, and Lord, give uh, the leadership of this nation uh, wisdom. And, and Lord, once again, thank you for loving us. In your precious and holy name we pray, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'll see you guys next time. Oh, hey, Carlos. Hey, Norm. See Norm back there? The big, goofy, tall-looking guy. Run back there. But show, show, show respect. He's your elder. All right, there you go. <laughs> I love my deacons, man. I love them. Fantastic. <laughs> what did he say? Sinner. Sinner. <laughs> oh, man. Man, I'm just so thankful that we, we have a place where we can worship the Lord together and serve the Lord together and we can laugh together and, and our world is just flat losing its mind and just no, no hope and no peace and just angry and it's just, isn't it good just to breathe in the presence of the Lord on a Sunday morning and just be together as a family. So one of the things that we get to do as the family of God is the same thing we get to do at my house with my family. Uh, we pull up our chairs around our table as often as we can, and, and we eat together. And, and occasionally we get to do that as a, as a church family, as God's family. We get to come to God's table, and his table is a special table, far different than the table at my house with my family, because his table represents so very much. Um, his table represents this truth, that were it not for Jesus, we would have no reason to laugh today. Were it not for Jesus, we would have no reason to have any hope or joy in our hearts today. There's this misnomer in society today, this, this lie that has really just um, gone viral, I guess, in the last several generations in the world, that says this, good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. And that's not at all what the Bible teaches. In, in fact, to be very clear, what the Bible teaches us is that good people and bad people go to hell. That's what the Bible says. The Bible teaches us that only one kind of person is admitted into heaven. Only one kind of person can have a relationship with God. It's not a good person. The Bible describes the kind of person that gets to go to heaven and have a relationship with God as a righteous person. And Paul makes it abundantly clear in Romans chapter 1 that nobody's righteous. Nobody. Therefore, nobody gets to go to heaven because nobody is righteous. And nobody gets to have a relationship with God because nobody is righteous. And some of you are kind of looking at me like, I think you've lost your mind because that doesn't make sense. Nobody gets to go to heaven? That's right. Because if being righteous is what allows us into heaven, if being righteous is what allows us to have a relationship with God... None of us meet that qualification, not a single one. Not priests who walk by 
a good Samaritan, not temple helpers who walk by a good Samaritan. Not even good Samaritans get to go to heaven because they're good Samaritans. Being righteous is the only way, and none of us can make that claim. We were all separated from God because of our unrighteousness, because of our sin. We were his enemies. We were dead in our sin. We could not save ourselves. We could not undo our unrighteousness. We could not work ourselves into a state of righteousness so that God could love us. There's nothing we could do. But God did something for us. I don't know why he did. He had nothing to gain from it. Nothing, God had nothing to gain by loving me. I, I, you know, God wasn't worried about being God for all of eternity if he didn't have me on his team. He wasn't worried about that. I've not made God a better God. I've not made God a bigger God or a stronger God or a richer God. And neither of you, there was no benefit for God whatsoever to do what he did. It was just pure grace. Pure grace. The Bible says, you know the verse so well, God so loved the world that he sent his son. That if we would believe in him, we wouldn't have to perish. We wouldn't have to live separated for eternity in a place of punishment away from God. But we could have everlasting life, not, not everlasting death. What the gospel teaches us is that at the cross, and this is what the table reminds us of today. At the cross, Jesus took our place. We should have been punished for our rebellion against God. We should have been punished for our sin and for our selfishness. But in our place, God punished his own son. Nobody has ever lived a righteous life on this planet except Jesus. He lived without ever falling into sin, never stumbled, no sin whatsoever. And yet the Bible says that he who knew no sin not only took on our sin at the cross on himself, but he actually, the Bible says, became sin. He became sin itself. Everything that was opposed to God, everything that was an enmity with God, Jesus became that in our place. And at the cross, G God treated Jesus like we should have been treated. So that through Jesus, for all of eternity, we could be treated the way Jesus deserved to be treated. That's what we call the gospel. It's good news. Now, we say nobody's ever suffered like Jesus, and that's absolutely true. When we say that, we're not talking about the way he suffered physically. Other people have suffered like Jesus suffered physically. People have been tortured. People have died horrific deaths. But Jesus suffered like nobody else because nobody else has ever walked in this world in perfect fellowship with God to have it stripped away because of something that they did not do. That's a suffering that you and I can't imagine. And at the cross, when Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's a suffering that we cannot imagine. But he not only took our sin upon himself there at the cross, but he took our separation from God. For all of eternity, Craig, I should have been crying out, God, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? But from now through all of eternity, I will never have to say that. Because he will never leave me. And he'll never forsake me. Even though I will him often, he never will me. And that's true because Jesus took my sin and my separation at the cross. And so today, the Father invites us to come to the table in step with the Spirit for the glory of the Son. Praising him that at the cross, Jesus laid his life down for me and for you. At the cross, his body was torn to shreds. His blood was shed so that you and I might be reconciled to God. He gave his life in our place, that we could be called the sons and the daughters of God. Jesus suffered at the hands of evil men. The creator of the universe suffered at the hands of evil men that you and I might pull up a seat to the table of God's grace and God's mercy. And so we get to do that today. And so it's, it, it, it's something that we do soberly. I mean, it is so serious. Paul says, don't, don't come here in an unworthy manner. We don't want to come with sin in our hearts. We don't want to come with unconfessed sin in our lives. We don't want to come arrogantly or self-righteously. We want to come humbly, rejoicing in God's love for us, what he did at the cross for us. We, we want to come with clean hands and a pure heart. That means we have an opportunity today to, before we come to the table, say, God, cleanse me. God, forgive me of my sin. The Bible says that if we ask him, he'll forgive us and he'll cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He'll do that. So we want to come to the table 
in a worthy manner. But I, I think also through the years, we, we've kind of thought that a worthy manner is to come just all stone-faced serious. I, 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 don't th I, I think a worthy manner is to also come and rejoicing. Just thrilled. I mean, this is bigger than a kid on Christmas morning. We get Jesus. We get, we get salvation. We get adoption. And, you know, why the long face? Come on, man. This is God saved me. He made me his because of what Jesus did at the cross. So we want to come to the table like that today. All right. But this is the table for God's family. And the way you become a part of God's family is real simple. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you'll be saved. I know that sounds too simple, doesn't it? That sounds too good to believe. That's why I'm convinced all this comes from God. Because if man tried to create this religion, we would have made it really convoluted, wouldn't we? We would have made it sound complicated and all high and mighty. And we would have just draped it in all kind of religiosity. But the gospel just says, Jesus says, just believe and say it, and I'll save you. And whatever needs to be changed after that, I'll change you <coughs> in due time. We don't got to sweat it. He'll do that. So what I want us to do before we come to the table, I want you to take a moment. Everything we do on Covenant Day is about being God's family, about being the people of God. But there's one moment in every Covenant Day that, that you have to break away and become an individual for a moment. And that's this moment. Where in a sense, you kind of have to draw a circle around yourself and just put you and God in that circle and say, God, examine my heart. Show me where there's sin in my life. Show me, Lord, where there's something that's not pleasing and honoring to you, and I'll confess it to you. I'll agree with you, God. You're right. I'm wrong. Forgive me. And so I want to ask you to bow your heads with me. And just in your mind, just draw that circle around you and God. This is not like, you know, my son said a moment ago, well, I'm mean to my sister because she's mean to me. This is not a time to bring anybody else into that conversation. My sin before God is independent of anybody else. I know there may be other issues that kind of swirl around all that. God will get me to that, but right now, God's got to get me to Him first. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Confess that sin. Ask Him to cleanse you. You want to come to his table with clean hands and a pure heart today. heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here today and you're not a part of the family of God, you've never given your life to Jesus, I wonder if that's why you're here today. I wonder if that's why God arranged your life, is to simply bring you to this place today so that today would be the day that, by grace, through faith in Jesus, you become part of the family of God. God wants you to come to his table as his son or as his daughter. And he says, if you believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord. He died in your place. You believe that. You believe the gospel. You believe in your heart. He is Lord. Confess with your mouth. You'll be saved. I've never done it like this before, but I'm going to do it this way today. You're not a part of the family of God, but you want to be today. Right now, you sit there and you go, man, I believe it. I believe. I believe. Well, now's the time to confess it with your mouth. I know it sounds ridiculous. And you might be worried about what somebody's going to think. But if you're the real deal, you won't care. This is your opportunity to stand and confess your faith in Jesus in this room in front of everybody. And all you got to say is three words. Jesus is Lord. You want to be part of the family of God today, I encourage you right now to stand and say, Jesus is Lord.
Amen, brother. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, if we're ready to come to the Father's table, here's the way we'll do that. I'm going to have some pastors and deacons that will be helping me today. and We'll start with these outer sections here. You'll exit that way and around to the front, and you'll get a piece of bread and a cup of juice. Just hold on to that. You'll exit through the center aisle and then back around to your seats. And as that outer section is finishing up, then we'll move to the next section. In the next section, you'll do that the same way. And then when we all have been served, we'll all eat and drink together. Okay?
save from wrath and make me pure. Not the labor of my hands can fulfill thy law's commands. Could my zeal the respite I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned
voices. Say it one more time. How marvelous. Sing it out. How So glad to be at the table with you all today. The Apostle Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you stand with me as I read verse 26? Paul says, whenever you do this, whenever you come to the Lord's table as a church like this, whenever you eat and drink this cup, you... Proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That's such a powerful statement pointing us to this table. Because when we come to this table, something unique happens like no other thing or place in the world. Both simultaneously, when we come to the Lord's table, we get to look back at the most important event in human history. The Son of God giving his life at Calvary for me and for you. And at the same time, we simultaneously get to look forward to the single greatest event in human history, King Jesus, the risen Lord, returning for his people. You don't, you don't get to go to the cross and the second coming of the king at a ball game or at the mall or anywhere else, but the Lord's table is something special that Jesus has given the body of Christ, that together in unity we get to say, Jesus, thank you for the cross and thank you that you're coming again. Some of you have been through the valley of the shadow of death recently. This reminds us the best is still yet to come. Sin, death, and the grave have been defeated. Jesus is alive, and he is our king. Amen? Amen. Let's worship him. Let's praise him today. Listen to the words as we sing it together.
everything is ready. So let's let those who are being baptized and their families uh, beat the crowd out of here. So uh, you see Jason over there? Hey, something big happened in Jason's life this week, too. Man, it's like baby day. <laughs> got two now. Jason's got two. God bless he and Sam, a precious little boy. Um, gosh, what's the name? Carson. Carson Andrew. I remembered Andrew. I went blank on Carson. Carson Andrew. So families and those getting baptized just... Go on out this way. I'm going to get in behind them. Y'all let me go. And any of you that can, we'd love for you to come in the student center and just celebrate with us. I'll let you out, out a little early today, right? So you can come. How many of your Sunday school classes got interrupted by the next Sunday school class today? Everybody? They are like, they got out so early. They didn't know what to do. They came in on you 30 minutes early, so sorry about that. I can't win. I go long, y'all fuss. I go short, y'all fuss. So. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, God bless you guys. <laughs> 